to take away that farm that is owned by a family and is holded by people who do need that use that farm to get money and live and it's just switched to a high school is kind of sad. Have you enjoyed picking strawberries from Spoonerberry Farms? Well, today the fate of the farm remains uncertain. Good morning, Capital. I'm Oscar Bacon, and today we tell you about the plans the Olympia School District may have for the site. A new high school may be coming to Olympia, but the fate of Spooner Berry Farms hangs in the balance. Today, I take a closer look. This summer marks the 40th anniversary of Tim and Sue Spooner selling their fresh, local grown berries to the people of Washington. And with the effects and closures of the COVID-19 pandemic winding down, brings a return of the Strawberry You Pick Field this June at their premier location on Yelm Highway. But on March 22nd, the Olympia City Council voted unanimously to negotiate a partnership with the Olympia School District to locate and construct a new high school adjacent to a proposed Yelm Highway community park on that very You Pick site. The Spooners, who apparently have been left out of the conversation so far, aren't confident about the future of their berry farm that sits at the edge of the 83-acre property. The City of Olympia purchased the property that the stand in Yupik Field sit on back in 2018 for $10.7 million, but have leased the site to the Spooner since. Since then, ideas and concepts for the proposed park have been going back and forth on their layouts and varying whether or not the berry stand will lie within its boundaries. The city has yet to approve a sale to the OSD for the property, but if they do, it's up to the OSD on whether or not they will continue a lease of the property to the Spooners. If they do, they should try and um, negotiate a, um, a way to still have the farm just elsewhere is kind of sad and it's kind of hard to gauge the population that's going to happen in 10 to 15 years because you know maybe there's another pandemic that wipes out half of the population and then guess what doesn't happen there's not overpopulation at a high school so you never know but maybe people end up like bunnies in the next few years and pump out kids left and right you know little jerry's gonna have five siblings but, you know, you never know. But I do think it is kind of trash that these people people are losing their main form of um, money intake to a high school. I get, I'm, I'm a small dude, so I get shoved around a lot in the hallways. And I think that a new school in around 10 to 15 years and when I have three kids uh, will, will, will help a lot. And though any construction plans from the city of the OSD are years out, Apparently, the Spooners feel left out of the conversation. In a talk with local newspaper The Olympian, Sue Spooner said the city was good to work with until the decision was made to continue negotiations with the OSD. She, she said she hadn't heard anything from the OSD on their plans for the property. Laura Keehan, parks planner for the city of Olympia, who also spoke with The Olympian, said what is being sold to the OSD includes all the property Spoonerberry Farms currently uses. She said there are still many decisions to be made in the future and many conversations to have, but she hopes the three organizations can work together in the future. With construction of a school still 10 to 15 years out, we've got time to do it, Keehan said. The city of Olympia does not want to be known as the berry killer. Turning to other news, yesterday the State Board of Health voted to not require COVID vaccinations for students for next year. That means if you are not yet vaccinated, you won't be required to be next year. But safety requirements will most likely remain in place, such as hand hygiene and physical distancing to the extent possible. And as you probably have noticed, there have been a few improvements happening around Capitol lately. First, you probably noticed the new decals around the school. Those are the work of the CHS administration. And the art hallway is under construction. The reason? A pipe leaking under the floor. The hallway should be tiled and open again soon, but the more extensive work will likely take place over the summer. Next up, here's Jimmy Nguyen with next week's Spirit Week schedule. For Monday, there will be a sports or workout wear day. For Tuesday, there will be a business formal wear day where you can dress up in a suit attire. For Wednesday, there will be a twin day where you can bring matching outfits for your friends. For Thursday, there will be a decade day, so each grade has their own decade. And finally, for Friday, students can dress up as teachers, or teachers can dress like students. Coog TV now has a breaking news hotline where you can call in to report news you see around the school that you think we should cover, such as a helicopter landing on our field. Please let us know. The number is 360-596-8039. Again, 360-596-8039. If you forget that number, check out the posters in the hallway. Next, here's Charlie Cook with What's Good to Know.
Students, ASB needs you to purchase those spring semi-formal tickets ASAP. Capital needs to book the tent rental and keep us all dry next week. So get your tickets by Monday, please. Tickets are available in the ASB office by BPOD for $20. For the semi-formal spring dance, if you are bringing a guest, your guest pass request must be in by April 18th. You can get guest passes at the ASB office. Tickets are non-transferable, and only the person that purchased the tickets will be allowed into the dance. We will be checking names at the door, so don't forget to bring your ID. Next, a new club is starting at Capitol. Here's Ryan Jansen with more information. The idea for my club is that there's so much information out there about making money and all that that the schools don't teach, and that I could share my information about like all these strategies and all that. Like with students my age, you don't get that option to like learn about that stuff. Um, I have a lot of experience in this for the past years, and I'm I'm not only just gonna like teach. I'm like here to learn for myself too. Math map testing will be taking place on Tuesday, April 19th. The schedule will be different that day, but all buses will run on a normal schedule. All 9th, 10th, and 11th graders who have not taken and passed two semesters of Algebra 2 will be participating in testing. The students who aren't testing arrive at a normal time and stay in your first period class and use that time as a study hall. You can find your name in the testing room posted outside the counseling center. Please have your Chromebook fully charged for testing day. Finally. Lunch today is corn and black bean enchiladas, savory wheat crackers, green peas, and your choice of fresh fruit. And that's as good to know. And now, sports news. Spring volleyball workouts will begin again starting Monday, April 18th. It'll be every Monday and Thursday through the end of May. Workouts are from 3.40 to 4.20 p.m. Everyone is welcome. Finally, this is a friendly reminder that you can still submit your application to be on the dance team for next year. Just scan the QR code you see on posters in the hallways. Well, that's all for today's broadcast. Make it a good morning, Capital. Thank you for watching Pig TV. Next, the Pledge of Allegiance. You may now stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.